So welcome to today's Liber Arts Club. So um, I forgot that we had already planned a specific session uh, um, on, on um, extracting data from summarized experiment objects. Because um, I remember th this, um, we got a request or a um, suggestion to uh, to look at uh, data uh, related to, in some way related to, um, uh, like the protest uh, from George Floyd and like everything that has been happening surrounding um, like racism in the U.S. Um, and so, because we were previously looking at tidy data, um, I found this. Um, data set uh, from last year that is about incarceration rates in the US. So you can find it here at the bottom um, and we'll do this extract data in another way. Um, so if you go to the Google, I mean the Google Doc um, here, I guess before we start, I just wanna mention that there's a new version of R Studio that was released at the end of May. So this is like basically a month ago is May 27th, um, which you might be interested in looking up and checking out and um, installing on your computer. All right. So before we go into the data and any of that, today this involves multiple R packages. So in case you haven't installed them, um, uh, I want you to try to install the remotes package. So this first three lines of code will try to load the remotes package. And if it fails with this exclamation, um, exclamation point over here, if it fails, it's actually going to install it. Once, it is in, it, it, once you have it installed, remotes has a function called install underscore cran, which is really like install the packages, but a little bit different in the sense that uh, install the packages always installs the package um, that you give it to install underscore cran will only install the package if there's a newer version out there than the one you have currently installed. So this is a bit of um, um, uh, a faster way of just making sure you have all the packages we need and not having to install everything from scratch. Um, um, all right, so if you could just uh, run, you can basically copy paste this code and run it on your computer. Um, uh, in the meantime. All right, so let's talk about the data here. So uh, that's this link that I already opened in a different tab. Um, so this is a data set that was uh, shared for Tidy Tuesday on January 22nd, um, on 2019. And this is actually, this was, um, they released it because um, they were um, trying to do what's called data for good, um, and data for good activity on the Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. Day from last year. Um, so, um, and like, we're gonna use these data sets just because it's, um, there's code, people have like done some analysis with it and we can try to learn from it. Um, um, and it, it is a data set that has like, um, that shows some differences between like uh, black and white um, um, individuals in the US. So this data actually comes from this place called the Varian Institute, uh, which I don't really know much about this institute. Um, and, uh, but this institute has a GitHub a site where they share some data and they have actually a very raw data set that the person that put this together, uh, Thomas Mock, um, processed partially to try to simplify things. Um, and so the data set is actually composed of five different tables. Pre prison summary, pretrial pre -trial summary. These are versions that uh, Thomas Mock made, but then there's also a bit more um, pre, like, um, a bit more raw data, which is prison population and pretrial population, which are county level data for prison or pretrial um, population or incarceration. Um, 
And this is data from 1970 to 2015 for the jail data and prison data from 1983 to 2015 in the US. Um, then there's also incarceration trends, which is really the, the actual data that the Vera Institute provides. Um, so if we go to the data dictionary, we can actually go see the full original dictionary from the Vera Institute. Um, here are some variables in the summary version that uh, we won't actually use, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna dive to prison, prison population, which is the table that the two blog posts that we're gonna look at today actually use. So there's like, uh, a couple of variables here uh, related to like state, year, uh, county name, uh, what type of uh, urban place it is, region of the US, division of the US, which I don't know the difference between these two, um, uh, population category, and then like some numbers that we'll be interested in, which is like the number of individuals in each category, um, and then uh, number of individuals in prison. Um, um, like, so that's the data here. Uh, and there's a bit more history about uh, what it com where it comes from uh, and the different analysis that they did with this data set. Um, um, now, Thomas here has a comment that he says, like, please use your best judgment, be respectful and careful when reporting on trends in this data set. So uh, for us, this is really like just a, a learning experience um, with a rele relevant data set. Uh, it's not like we're gonna make um, any um, claims based on the data set, because uh, maybe we will need to spend a bit more time learning about um, some details of how to uh, um, how the data set was created and like how to properly report the data. Um, uh, but well, here's just more data sets that we could be interested in more locations, publications. Um, right. um, so um, we're just going to open the, the links to the blog post. I have blog post one and blog post two. So these are uh, individual, individuals that uh, back in 2019 read the data and like they tried to make some analysis with it. Um, and so this first one here, they're gonna read in the data. They have some code over here that makes a map of the US. Um, um, and then they start adding the states state lines and then the county lines so like all those little lines over there i don't know if you're able to see them um, like this small little lines there um so once they're able to make a map then they're like okay we need to process some of the data um and one of the things they wanted to know was like if there's any missing data um they compute this table over here of missing data, and then they use a package called ggAnimate to make these animations over here that show the percent of missing data per county per, uh, and aggregate it at the state level. And it goes from, I think it, um, it's going to end in 2015 and starts, I think, in 1970. Um, so this is a pretty, like, um, these type of uh, uh, GIFs are like, um, a lot of people are making them now, especially for presentations. Um, and so it's, um, it might be a little bit too fast for us to like notice all the differences, but like you can kind of see where the data is missing. Um, a lot of it's over here uh, in the middle of the US. Um, so that's the visualization that this person made. Um, uh, whose name? Is, um, I don't know anyone who made this. Um, uh, Sean. Um, so this is someone is like, oh, I'm trying to learn R, and they're like using the tidy TSA uh, data set to try to learn and like apply something new to them. Uh, the next person is Christopher Yi. Uh, he read in the same data, uh, 
the prison population data set. Uh, but then actually did some like tidying of the data, which he calls here, he calls here uh, process the raw data. Once he has that, then he makes several like a bit of tidying and then a bit of plotting at the same time. The plotting here is, gets a little bit complicated, but he's able to make these nice plots that have the prisoner population on the y-axis, the county population on the x-axis, and then um, we can see a cloud of points uh, because this is uh, using the data from 1970 to 2015 or 16. Um, but then he has different curves, different like lowest curves for um, uh, five like um, race or ethnicities that they have in the data. So Asian, Black, Latino, Native American, and white. And so you can see here some, uh, some big differences and then he explores, for example, like does urbanicity play a difference here? Does it change the, this overall plot? So now he makes a different plot um, uh, faceted by urbanicity. Um, so these are, in a way, these are like short explorations um, uh, using the data. And so um, what I would like people to do is, let's start with, uh, with this one over here. Um, uh, I would like people to tr to go uh, through the code in like small groups and um, and like maybe you maybe there's some functions that you're not familiar with um, maybe there's uh, um, some things you might want to change um, but what I want you to go is like go through the code and see if you understand it and then we'll reconvene and then talk about the, talk about the code here. Um, Cool. So kind of like what we, what we did already with the tidy, um, with the previous tidy Tuesday project that we looked at. Um, uh, but um, uh, the idea is that we're uh, hopefully uh, starting to recognize some of the functions. Um, um, and uh, maybe we need to spend a little bit less time looking them up. But we'll see how it goes. Um, are there any questions? Uh, yeah. So that first blog post, um, this is my Windows computer right now, the one I'm showing. Um, and so uh, I could read the data in, but then uh, Luis, who also is on a Windows computer, had this issue that if you make the map, the map, even if you zoom in, um, has no county lines. Uh, so, yeah, I had the same issue with mine too. Is it an artifact of like the, the Windows play setup or? Yeah, so this happens on Windows because I guess it's using a different graphical device that maybe is not able to handle those, um, like um, some graphical devices are not able to handle what's called alpha blending of colors. So that's like making a color like lighter. Um, but then, for example, even on Windows, there's a PDF graphical device, which is different from the one that is used by default when you just try to print. So if you use a PDF graphical device, uh, you end up with, uh, uh, you do end up with the county lines. Um, they don't look great to me, but like you can see the lines there. <laughs> right, you can see a lot of little lines. Um, so that's one problem there that is different between Windows and Mac for this blog post. Okay. The next one is like, okay, you, I mean, you, you summarize the data. Um, uh, I don't know what I'm getting nervous there. Right. All right, you can summarize the data. So I think everyone was able to do that, um, uh, or most people were. Um, next. Um, Luis had a different problem, which I don't, I wasn't able to reproduce, um, which is about this one here. So let me try and run it. Yeah. So I do get a warning that the uh, function funds uh, uh, 
that does not exist on the plier version 8, uh, 0.80. Um, but I do get the little table output that I'm supposed to get. Um, so this is a um, type of warning that you can see uh, on packages that are being actively changed. So deprecation means that a function is no longer part of that package. Um, and it's now had like whatever funds used to do have now has been replaced by this couple of functions. And this can happen when you're looking at code that is old um, and you're using newer packages. So this blog post is from 2019. It doesn't actually have the version numbers of the package, so the reproducibility information on the blog post. But uh, we can try to guess what version of um, of dplyr that we're using based on what version of dplyr was available back in those days. And I'm assuming it, this was before 0 0.80. Uh, so that's a warning, but like um, that maybe some of you get, but it, it still displays the information. And it says like this is only displayed once every eight hours. The next error that is that was hard for me was actually making the animation. So they just try to make the animation with the code that they had there on the blog post. Um, eventually fails. Um, and it's trying to render the, the animation here at like a four frames per second um, velocity type of thing. Uh, but then it fails because it says like uh, the FPS, the frames per second, should be a factor of 100. Um, and this one was kind of hard. Like, I mean, I, I actually haven't fully solved it. This is what I try to spend most of my time with. And so this code over here fails on my Windows machine. But now let me uh, stop sharing on this computer. Go back to, the, uh, to my Mac computer. Um, so the same code on my Mac computer does work. Um, so this is using, um, uh, I imagine that it's failing on my Windows computer because maybe I need to install some software for it to run. Um, but it does complete here and I do get uh, a very fast GIF. Um, so, um, so this is also like why it might be useful for to share like what is the version, like the operating system that you're using for making the uh, uh, your code run. And um, this is an example of a package, the GG Animate package that um, involves system utilities, so like external software to R uh, to actually work. And so um, some of, sometimes that external software is easier to install like some operating systems than others. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I haven't dived in fully into what, maybe I can get this to work on a Windows uh, computer but um, it wasn't working for some reason. Um, so that's for actually getting the code to run. Um, uh, do any of you want to explain some of the tidying code that happened? I'm going to stop sharing with my uh, Mac computer. or some of the syntax of the functions. Any volunteers? No, so I'm gonna have to do a random drawing. So Claudia, can you explain to us? You're muted. Um, which part you, should I start at? The whatever, whatever you want to like. I mean, any 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 functions you. Okay. Like, do we want to start with? Because we already went through this sort of like putting in the state and counting lines. Should we just start after that? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so. This is starting at the section that has the raw data piped with summarize all. 
Um, we'll start from there. Um, should I share my screen? I feel like it's not super necessary, but. Um, You're talking about the section called visualizing missing data. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. um, so in that section, uh, I was working with Kristen and Svetlana on it. Um, and what we think is going on is that in this first part, in the summarize all, it's um, basically finding the where there is missing data um, and I guess like creating or like summing how many, uh, how much missing data there is in each of the columns, right? <laughs> um, and then the select if part um, is selecting for anything where the call selecting any I think columns that have missing data over zero. Um, and then we were sort of talking about the cable part because we were unfamiliar with that from the start. Mm -hmm. um, and we sort of deduced or think that it creates sort of like a simple table um, from the data that we've extracted in these upper two lines. Um, and then the cable styling is basically just putting in like, a, like the specific parameters for how they want that table to look. Um, bootstrap options, I think we didn't look super into that, but um, we were unsure if it was supposed to be like specifically formatted to for like internet compatibility. Um, but that's just basically yeah. putting in the options for how they want the table to look. Yeah, so that's um, that. So table is a function uh, that makes. Um, uh, puts tables into like a HTML format or like other types of formats, but in particular here mm -hmm. they use an HTML format. And so like under HTML, you have to use the like, um, what is this? Um, less than table. Um, and then you have to end it with like less than forward slash table. And inside of you, you have to put like the numbers in a specific format. And like uh, you can have multiple, I mean, different, uh, uh, ways of visualizing a table. And so here they say mm -hmm. like the class should be table strip, table condense, which is information that is used by um, a web, um, a web um, tool for visualizing tables called um, like a bootstrap. Um, that's what it's doing. So this is like a bit of like CSS type of thing. <laughs> but like really for us, like we only really needed to like print the table, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, this person is just making it look nice on their blog post. Like here, that type of like. Formatting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like really like, um, if I just select earlier pieces, that should be enough. Um, So this is like our raw version of the R table. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was looking, we have like about a million three hundred thousand rows. And this is just telling us that for population and prison population, we have two hundred and seventy three thousand and seven hundred fifty one thousand missing patterns overall. Yeah. So that's what they were trying to do there. Cool. Thank you, Claudia. Sure. Um just like a quick question. The, the code is the way it's written. It's, it just selects for those two columns because those are the only ones that have missing data? Yeah. OK. Yeah, so if we do like the, if we do the, we can do the base R version of doing this. And we can quickly see how many missing values we have for those two columns. The other ones don't have any missing values. So this is like a single command <laughs> compared to what they did there. But <laughs> and you can do it. Yeah. Cool. 
who wants to explain uh, this uh, tidy code over here? Uh, Nick, can you explain? Um, yeah, I can. I can try. Uh, we didn't get this far, but I can see if I can go through it anyways. Um, okay, it's taking the raw data, it's filtering it. Um, so. I guess top category is a column. Um, so it's taking all the um, rows in the data, in the table that where the column is to, uh, equal to total. Um, it's then um, grouping it by year and state, but um, I'm not actually sure what, I kind of forget what Group by actually like, I know it's grouping in some way, but like I'm very exactly what it means. Yeah, so we have a very long table, right? Like a um, million three hundred thousand rows. Mm -hmm. Then we're just upsetting that table to those that have the total value in in the top category column. Mm -hmm. So let me go see. Um, Category. So that's 147,000 rows, really. Um, so we're like not looking at the breakdown by um, race or ethnicity or gender. Uh, so we're just looking at the total entries. Um, and so for those, then those 147,000 rows, then this is a long table. And so group by just like makes like smaller tables of it. And here we're saying like, we want to make a small table for each unique combination of year and state. Uh, that's what group by is doing. Once we have those smaller tables by like unique combination of year and state, then we're summarizing that information by creating a new column called missing data. And that one is going to have whether the Prussian population is missing is going to compute the mean for that. Uh, so this, remember, this, um, uh, this translates the logical vector that is false and true into zeros and ones. And mean is going to give us a proportion. They want it in percent, though, so they're multiplying it by 100. But then they don't, they don't want all the digits that can come with it. So then they're rounding to two digits. Once they do that, then we want the, uh, the big table again. Um, and so they're ungrouped, right? So they're no longer uh, grouped by unique combination of year and state. So that's what states, state missing data is. Once they have that table, so um, let's see how big it is. So this should have one row per unique combination of year and state. Um, and so there's um, 20, almost 2,400 rows. Um, once they have that then, Next, they only look at, let's say like, oh, let's look at the data from Texas, right, TX. And then they print that table. And that's what we have here. And they did this just to explore the data. So like the miss, it's missing across, 100% of the data is missing from 1970 to 1982. Then suddenly like almost none of it is missing in 1983. And it stays low then, but then in 1996, 2003 suddenly there's a lot of data missing um, and then again it goes back to almost nothing and, and then well there's no data for 2016 right because um, there's this table so it's up to 2015 and so that's the data that they have there for Texas um, so they kind of do try to do the same thing then for all the states so here they're going to mutate the data and they're going to create a new variable called region um, and what they're doing here is that they're taking um, the state names and um, matching them and then making them lowercase with the string to lower function. Once they have them in the lowercase, they need that because the map data function, the, the map 
information comes with lowercase names. They merge that information into that map info in, into the map here with the, the state uh, coordinates, um, and then they make the plot. When like using ggplot, uh, using the uh, polygon for the for the mapping information, um, using the coordinate maps to add like um, to translate the longitude and latitude into a mapping. Then they use um, the Viridis uh, uh, color scale, which is a colorblind friendly scale that goes from um, blues, dark blue to uh, bright yellow. Um, and then the function here, transition manual, is a function from the GG animate package that makes actually the GIF and then saying like one, one frame per year or one like image per year. Um, then using labs, they're adding the title of the plot and the subtitle of it. And notice here that year is using a specific syntax with the curly, um, curly brackets and that changes every frame we have, right? And every frame depends on the year, which was specified for transition manual. Once they have that, then they add a legal like uh, specific specifics option saying like they want the legend to be on the right side. Um, and then they want a title to be bold. Um, um, and then uh, the subtitle, they also want to move it a little bit on the text, on the vertical positioning of the text. So this is a lot of like function, functions here, but these are more like graphical things that we haven't seen as much. Um, so uh, we've run over time today, um, uh, but this was a bit, this got complicated because it doesn't work nicely on, on the different operating systems. Um, um, but I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know what you thought about it. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>